Hi, I'm excited to teach this to you. This is determining the pH of a resulting solution when you have an acid and a base react. Um, but this is special. The acid and base have equal number of moles that react. This is really, really special uh, when we look at a graph. Um, so in this example, I'm going to start with my ammonia, NH3, and then we're going to add hydrochloric acid to it. Notice this is a weak, okay, that's a weak base adding to a strong acid. So you start about a pH of 9 for our ammonia, start adding drop, 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 drop of the HCl, um, and then right there, that point is called the equivalence point. It's where the moles of the acid equal the moles of the base. The moles of the hydrogen equal the moles of the hydroxide. Um, that point, when those moles are equal, super special equivalence point. And then if you keep adding HCl, we've consumed, in this case, it would have been all of the base, and now we just have the acid, excuse me, um, that's going to remain with whatever the conjugate acid is um, that was produced right here. It's going to be that ammonia. Um, so <laughs> this, I call it the three steps, all right, of all of the acid-base reactions. This is going to be the calculation that takes the most time. And let me tell you right now, you can do it, all right? You've got this, you can do it. It's dialed down to three steps. Here we go. First thing you do is you always do initial final moles. Now, when you know to do this, it's if you're given an acid and a base, and one of those is not water. If you are given a solution that it says like acetic acid, what's the pH? That means um, the acid was added to the um, was added to water. It was created as a solution. In that case, you go right to an ice table, okay? Um, or a salt that has a base ion is added to water. That is just going to be an ice table. So anytime you have something, one item with water, it's either an acid or a base reaction, you go right to the ice table. If you are given an acid and base, and there's not water, okay, so I have a strong acid, a weak base, guess what? You live with initial final moles. You have to do initial final moles. Um, now, if you do initial final moles, and it ends up that these moles are exactly the same, identical initially, it means you have to do step two, and you gotta do step three. If they're not identical. I want you to watch the video on Henderson Hasselbach. That's the easy, fast, dirty way to figure out pH. It'll save you a ton of work. Um, but if you have the exact number of initial moles, there's no way around it. You live with the three steps. So initial final moles. If initial moles are the same, then we're going to do a dilution for the product. I'll show you what that means. We're finding the new concentration once these two solutions are added. And then lastly, you have to do a new ice table with that product plus water. I'll show you how to do all of this. You can do it. Um, so let's look at this particular problem. Uh, we are told that we have 25 mils of a 0 0.016 molar ammonia, 25 moles of a 0 0.016 molar hydrochloric acid. Um, so I'm going to write this over here. Um, we have 0 0.016 molar, remember that's moles per liter, and we're told that we have 25 mils. So 25 mils, I'm going to go ahead and divide it by 1,000 to get that to liters, and that would be 0 0.025 liters. Now, keyword here, moles. I'm not looking at molarity, I'm looking at moles. I need to see the actual moles reacting. Um, so when we multiply this, we are going to get four times 10 to the four moles. Liter cancels, four times 10 to the minus four moles. Um, now that was for, they told us both the ammonia had that molarity and volume and the hydrochloric acid. So I know initial, this is how I write it. Do a line above on your paper and a line below on your paper. My initial moles are four times 10 to the minus four. That's for the HCl. And I had the same situation, molarity and volume for the ammonia, which means it's four times 10 to the minus four moles. Now initially I'm going to have zero of each of those before they react. Now, when you have an acid and a base, especially strong acid or strong base, with a weak acid or weak base, so you have one strong, one weak, that strong, remember it 100% ionizes, 100% breaks apart, that means that baby is going to rip through every single mole, okay? It's going to, re every possible mole will react. So, if I have four moles of this and four moles of that, notice it's a one-to-one, 
they are going to completely react. I will have zero of the HCl left over and zero of, oops, sorry, zero of that uh, ammonia left over. Those completely react. So what's produced, what's produced? Look at the molar coefficients. For every one mole of HCl that reacts, it produces one mole of ammonia. Okay, for every one mole of, oops, see, ammonium. For every one mole of ammonia that reacts, one mole of ammonium is produced. So if I have four times 10 to the minus four moles that react, it means I'm going to have four times 10 to the minus four moles that are produced. Same thing here with the chlorine. Four times 10 to the minus four moles are produced. Okay, can you see the mistake? Could you predict the mistake the students make here? What they will do is they will add those together and say eight times 10 to the minus four. That's not true. It's not one, one, two. It's one, one, one. For every one mole makes one mole. If I have four times 10 to the minus four moles here, I'm going to have four times 10 to the minus four moles there. Look at the molar coefficients. Okay, this right here, put a star. This is your clue. If you find yourself in a situation where you have zero, zero, those moles are identical, completely react and are consumed, it means woohoo! You're right there, baby. You're at the equivalence point. You've got to do the three steps. So I want you to think about this with me. I literally have a little Erlenmeyer flask with 25 mils of HCl, another little Erlenmeyer flask with 25 mils of ammonia. I pour these together. The acid and the base react. What's left in here? Okay, well, first of all, I know I combine them. So I've got 50 mils. Okay, I had the 25 mils, 25 mils. I now have 50 mils of this. Um, and what's floating in there is ammonium four times 10 to the minus four moles, and the chloride. We want to find the pH of this new solution. How do I do that? So I look at these ions. First of all, chloride is a neutral ion. It will not impact uh, the pH because it's associated with the strong acid, hydrochloric acid. If you need help with neutral ions, please go to the acid-base equilibrium playlist and watch the video on um, aqueous solution of salts and it talks about neutral ions okay this that chloride is going to float in this 50 mils do a big fat nothing it will not impact the ph because it's a neutral ion however ammonium that's not a neutral ion it will impact the ph so now the ph because these two are consumed the ph will completely depend on that ammonium so step two is dilution I need to find the new molarity. So I've got moles. I know eventually to find pH, I have to do an ice table. Ice tables use molarity. So I've got to change this from moles to molarity. So what we did right here, step one, initial final moles, I know what my final moles are. Again, if you end up with numbers here, watch my video on Henderson Hasselbach. That tells you how to find pH when you have something left over um, on the reactant side for, uh, for final. Okay, we're at zero. Gotta find my step two, new molarity. So we have, let me remind you of this. Remember we have 0.016 molar, 25 mils of HCl, 0.016 molar, 25 mils of NH3. I poured these two together so they could react. So what's my total volume? 25 plus 25, there's my 50 mils. So this ammonium that was produced is floating in 50 mils of solution. So let's find step two. My dilution is going to be four times 10 to the minus four moles of ammonium. Don't care about the chloride because it's going to be a neutral ion divided by my new volume, which was 50 mils, 0 0.05 liters, 0 0.05 liters. So remember that is the new volume. And all you have to do is take the mills that you add, that you uh, pour together, add those, add those. So when we divide this, we are going to get a molarity of eight times 10 to the minus three, eight times 10 to the minus three molar than H4 plus my ammonium. Okay. So again, what do we have right now? Had my strong acid, my weak base, poured it together. They had the exact same number of moles, completely reacted. 
So all that's left in this solution now is that ammonium and the chloride. The chloride's neutral, won't change the pH. Um, so I took those moles, divided it by the new volume, and I have the molarity. So in this solution, it is a 8 times 10 to the minus 3 molar ammonium solution. So from that, we go to step 3. Do an ice table. That ammonium is going to partially react with the water. Going to partially react. So let's write step 3, our ice table for this. What you do is take whatever was left over, okay, whatever was produced, which was the ammonium, and you add that to water because that's the only thing that's going to react in this solution. The ammonium is going to partially react with the water um, because it's a weak acid. So plus water. Okay, acid going to donate a hydrogen. So act as a base going to accept a hydrogen. This will be an equilibrium. Notice. And it's because this only partially reacts, it goes into equilibrium. Forward and reverse rates are equal. Up here, notice I, used, I wrote a yield sign because that completely reacts. That strong acid will rip through that base and completely react. So what's produced? What I have ammonia and so that donated hydrogen, this will accept the hydrogen and hydroxide. Let's do our ice table. Initial change equilibrium. So my initial concentration is that, that right there. That's why we had to do that dilution step, put it in molarity. Eight times 10 to the minus three molar. Water is a liquid, doesn't impact equilibrium um, because it's not a part of the equilibrium expression. Uh, liquids, solids aren't included. I have zero of the ammonia, zero of the ammonium hydroxide, right? So I make this, I have this ammonium in the water, and now it's going to start to react with the water. It's going to partially react. Um, change, we're going to lose an amount of this reactant. For every one mole I lose, I'm going to gain um, an amount of the ammonia and gain an amount of the um, um, hydronium. And remember that's one, one, so that's, those are understood to be one. The coefficients match uh, the coefficients from the equation. E, love E, all we have to do is add I plus C. So we're going to have eight times 10 to the minus three minus X, zero plus X is X, zero plus X is X. Okay, so now we have to solve for X, which means I've got to look up the Ka for this equation. Now, why did I say Ka and not Kb? Whatever is added to water determines the reaction. This is an acid plus water, therefore I look up the Ka of ammonium. The Ka for ammonium is 5.6 times 10 to the minus, I believe it's minus 10. Let me look, let me do, yes, 5.6 times 10 to the minus 10. Let's go ahead and write our equilibrium expression. Ka will equal products, yep, which is my ammonia um, times hydronium divided by my reactant, which is the ammonium, the NH4. Okay, so now I can plug in everything I have. Um, let's go ahead and do that. We're going to have 5.6 times 10 to the minus 10 equals, those are x, x squared divided by 8 times 10 to the minus 3 minus x. Okay, so we can use our trick to cancel x next to concentration. Because this concentration is a factor of 100 or greater difference, this is 10 to the minus 3, that's 10 to the minus 7. It's actually seven zeros different. I only need two zeros different. x is negligible. It means when I find x, it's going to be so small that when I subtract x from this amount, it's still the same amount. It's just going to be 8 times 10 to the minus 3. Um, so we will multiply both sides by 8 times 10 to the minus 3, okay, a little bit of algebra. Take the square root of both sides, and x will equal, let me find it for you, x will equal 2.1 times 10 to the minus 6. Woo! And that is molarity. So x, 2.1 times 10 to the minus 6, right here, 2.1 times 10 to the minus 6, Take that number, subtract that from 8 times 10 to the minus 3. It's just going around to 8 times 10 to the minus 3 because that number is so small in comparison. Now, the whole point of all that, feel impressed, is to find pH. 
Notice we found the concentration of the hydronium. Let's just do pH equals the negative log of hydrogen, which is the same thing as hydronium. Remember, chemists use hydrogen ion and hydronium ion synonymously. They're interchangeable. So this will be negative log of 2.1 times 10 to the minus 6. And we're going to get a pH of 5.67. Woohoo. There you have it. Good work. Good work. Okay, quick review. When you're given an acid and a base, you write the reaction and you always do initial final moles. If when you do the initial moles, they're identical, so the final are zero, zero, it means you're at this beautiful equivalence point. You have to do these three steps to find pH. So you've already done step one, you know the final moles. You find the ion that will impact pH. That was a neutral ion, won't impact pH. So the ion that's not neutral, okay, that, doesn't, that does impact pH, step two, take the dilution. So you're going to take the volume of the two reactants, add that together with the mole that you end with, mole divided by liter, that gives you the new concentration of this ion that's floating in the solution that was created. Step three, you're going to take that ion and rewrite a new, well not rewrite, just write a new equation. It's going to be that product reacting with water. And when you have a product with, or when you have um, an ion with water, what do you have? An ice table, because this partially reacts and goes into equilibrium. So then you do your ice table, be really careful. If that's an acid plus water, you find Ka. If you get a base plus water, you do Kb. Solve for x. In this case, it gave us hydronium, so then we could do negative log of hydronium gives us pH. Um, you could have a reaction where it produces hydroxide. You can still find pH. It's just you'll find X is hydroxide. Take the negative log, which is pOH, and then subtract that from 14 to get pH. All right, there are your three steps. This is your clue. That's your clue. You do initial final moles when you have an acid or base, and if you zero zero on the reactant side, you live with the three steps. Okay, there is another example problem for you. If you wanna go over this one more time, watch the, um, the second example of this. All right, good work, thank you.